when you're ready. Go ahead. Hello, I'm Storm Thorgerson, designer of album covers and artiste. Too many album covers, actually. And allied material like posters, t-shirts, stickers, single bags, EPs. You name it, I've done it. Um, long in the tooth, short in the memory. See, long in the tooth and short in the looks is probably what I should say. Hello. Okay, so Storm, can you, um, let's just talk about the, um, the guitars. Okay, the guitars that I'm doing for Jeff and Jeff, it's quite an interesting proposition for me because I've never done it before. And although we will be using motifs from work that I've done before for eminent and not so eminent groups, it's quite an interesting thing because a guitar is like a three-dimensional object with lots of bits and pieces which are very awkward for an, an image maker like me. Normally I'm used to a flat surface and a sort of contained shape, like a square or a rectangle, in which I can do my image. However, a guitar has knobs, tremolo, scratch board, keys, strings, very awkward. However, if I were to take all these things off to make my life easier, it wouldn't be a guitar. So, I have to adapt to the guitar itself and try and fit stuff around it or in it or with it to be sympathetic to what a guitar is. Anyway, I was a bit daunted at first, but it turned out to be quite an interesting proposition. I've now done four in terms of design and uh, they're looking great. But it's difficult to know whether or how well it works for somebody else. Because obviously I don't want to impede the guitarishness of it. I don't want to impede its playing ability. But I do want to give it some kind of ident identity that is mine. Otherwise there's no point doing it. But so far, so good. They look great, even though I say it myself. But I shouldn't say it really. But I'm actually very thrilled, so it's hard it's, it's hard to contain enthusiasm as it is to contain paranoia. So when you're an artist, you either think your work is crap, the worst in the world, and nobody will like it, or you mistakenly think it's the best in the world and everybody will love it. Of course, it's neither of these things. But whilst you have the enthusiasm, I can tell you it's better than the paranoia. That's great. Um, so uh, any stories about when the so the artwork that you're doing on these guitars are based on album covers that you've done. Any good stories about when you were starting to do albums? That's a different question, Paul. Tut tut. There's two questions. Okay. Which one do you want? Um, whichever one you want to answer. <laughs> I started out um, designing by circumstance and chance and happened to be in a room or the door of a room in a flat or apartment in South Kensington in London, circa 1967, when my friend David Henderson was asked to design or paint, because he was a painter, a cover for Pink Floyd for Sourceful of Secrets. And he declined. I never know why. I never knew why. I don't know why now. However, I was at the door and said, oh, I'll do that. And when he said he wouldn't, I said, oh, I'll do that. In a sort of rather squeaky, childish fashion. And the band probably thought they didn't know any better. Might as well have a friend and not a, sim a sympathetic friend, rather than a record label, which of course was bound to screw it up anyway. This is the definition of a record label, by the way. Anything to do with music or art, they screw it up. That would define a label. The um, band then said, okay, well, you go do it. So I went and did it, and I did it in a very simple way. What I did was I made a collection of our peer group's favourite things, thinking that the Floyd came from Cambridge as we did, the, the, when I say we, it's the people who lived in the flat, compatriots, friends, colleagues from Cambridge, as were the band. So what, what was favourite items, literature, films, objet, references, etc., etc., it would be relevant to Pink Floyd because they came from the same place in time and, and geographically, and emotionally, I think, and intellectually, and conceptually. So in a sense, if I did a box of chocolates, 
a collection of my favourite things, like Doctor Strange from Marvel Comics, etc. It would be simpatico because the band came from the same place, which turned out to be true. Then they were sort of all right with that. I don't think they loved it to death, although I always thought the lettering was very clever. Now, ironically, the lettering was designed by the man who declined to do the cover. Such is the way of the world, eh? And um, I think that as a design, it's um, only passingly interesting, but I think it's very redolent and very appropriate. So I guess the band was sort of certainly more happy with that than they would be with Piper. You know, it was a sort of rather boring group photo. However, the relationship didn't really develop until the next job, which was Omagama, I think. And that worked an absolute treat as an attempt to represent the interweaving deeper layers within layers of the band's music. No pop triteness here, depth and meaning even. God's sake, fancy that. Which of course is why Johnny Rotten hated them. Actually he didn't hate them because he liked animals. But he claimed that because the punks were against meaning, it was always fuck Pink Floyd. But however, I think he grew out of that. Said it's bit my best condescending voice. So Umaguma worked really well, I thought. I still think it does now. It's funny that. It's not even a well-done artwork. It's rather clumsily done. But the idea is so strong that it even circumvents a bad artwork. And then I think I was lucky enough, really, to follow it up with Adam Mother, which also worked an absolute treat. This was 69 and 70, I think. And therefore... As it were, we managed, particularly with Atom Our Mother, which was just such an unbelievable success, way beyond my wildest dreams, because it just was supposed to look different, and boy, did it look different. It looked different even for a Floyd album, let alone anybody else's album. The record company freaked, of course, because it had no name on it, and what was a cow, anyway, to do with Pink Floyd? Cows are farmland animals, what are farmyard animals, what are they doing? Anyway, they missed the point, of course, entirely. I did it had nothing to do with Pink Floyd, because it was about how Pink Floyd could do something that had nothing to do with them. It was an intellectual exercise with a lot of humour. I mean, it still makes me smile today, personally. Anyway, this cemented the relationship, which then carried on up until now. So the guitars that I'm doing, say, for instance, I'm designing two dark sides. Well, they're not actually like dark side. They're derivative. They're referential without being it. In fact, they look completely different in some ways. But um, I'm very happy with them. And this reference or echo was requested by the two Jeffs. And I think is um, not an unreasonable thing to request. What will be unreasonable, of course, would be to do too many like that. One would be inclined to either do something anew or to use less well-known motifs, i.e. motifs that may suit the guitar better. This is a point I'm exploring at this very moment. I'm trying to think what of my motifs would be better deployed to fit into what is a slightly awkward shape, what with knobs, tremolo, strings, scratch board, bridge, headstock, frets. All these things are physical things that define a guitar but get in the way of an image. So you have to kind of, I suppose, feels that at first I felt okay I'll just do an image and paste it on the back and front and then I thought well that's kind of cheesy really and also it doesn't really respond to what a guitar is so I kind of got into or tried to get into what a guitar was what its bits were or how to use its bits which is funny since I've been working in rock and roll for more years than I care to remember it should take this long to get around to a guitar mm -hmm. Um, now, uh, obviously, with the uh, technology, things have changed from back then when you were doing albums to... Says who, Paul? Have you got a question here? Um, I'm not sure if it's a question or... <laughs> it's a comment you want to have. Okay. Go on then. Yeah, just the difference between, say, 30 years ago and today where, you know, as I remember as a kid... No Photoshop, all right. But also the, the physical nature. My personal tastes are quite eclectic. I like Bonnie Raitt. I like Miles Davis. 
Kevin Moe, Jimmy Smith, Steve Miller, Pink Floyd. There's lots of music I like and when I'm working I, I've managed to be able to suspend judgment so I don't actually judge the music at all, I just play it. I mean, I think the point is not really what I think about the music, but how I translate it from, as it were, one medium audio into another medium visual. So, <coughs> <coughs> my personal views, I think of little interest, either to fans or to the band. I do, I like your music, Governor. I don't think they care. They might think that I should, so I tend not to answer the question, really. And sometimes, of course, I fall in love with the music simply by playing it often. If you play music a lot, you can sort of get into it again, even if you initially you thought, hey, what's this? But uh, by and large, I suspend judgment because I don't think it's really my place. And then that is, is something I learned very early on and was a really useful technique. I know Neville Brody used to argue with me that you have to like the music, and I used to think, why? I didn't want Neville telling me what to do anymore, any more than I wanted the band telling me what to do. Not that he isn't a great designer, but what's good for him is not necessarily good for me. So, personally, I, I'm not interested in judging the music. I'm more interested in, I don't know, it sounds corny, but I'm more interested in the music permeating my being, temporarily, of course. I don't want it there all the time. So, we flood ourselves with the music for, what, a month? Quite long enough. And, uh, as it were... Hopefully that um, will do the trick. Are there artists who do album covers that uh, stand out for you? How do you mean? Does other designers? Other designers. Um, in answer to the question of what other designers do I respect, I in fact made a book called subtly entitled The 100 Best Album Covers, which contains 100 Best Album Covers in my view, and that was therefore a chance to extol the virtues of other designers. Whether it was Mick Haggerty, whether it was Matty Clarwine, whether it was um, Dieter Rem, whether it was 23 Envelope, etc, etc. There are a lot. I don't like to say it publicly because in a way the book said it all, but also I don't really have, you know, I know other designers, but not, not closely, except maybe Roger Dean, but that was because we were at the same college, by chance, not the same department, but the same college, and the same flat, actually, or the same block of flats. Um, I know Malcolm Garrett a bit, Keith Breeden, who, does, who has now resigned from the world of album covers and does portrait painting, was a great designer, whom I worked with quite a lot. I've worked with Steiner Rouge, Rob O'Connor, who's a very, really nice guy, very genteel. But I think I'm too preoccupied with my own stuff that I don't really pay much attention necessarily. I mean, of course, there are loads of good designers. Anyway, my book will tell you all, Paul. Okay. Um, and we've got two, three minutes left on the tape. Yes, yeah, so and also I'm running out of energy. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, where do you, s what's your vision of where you see these guitars ending up? Or have you thought about it or? Not really, no, because I presume they're private. I mean, in fact, actually, I have 30 years ago and today we're, you know, as I remember as a kid. No Photoshop, all right. But also the, the physical nature of getting an album. Yeah, that's two questions, really, because what you're talking about or what you, I think, you're referring to is the issue of the internet, digital mechanisms for producing artwork in a computer as compared to pre-computer times when it was done with cut and paste, with bits of board, with photographs, with bromides, with this, with dye transfers, with that, etc., etc. And it has changed in so much as particularly apropos artworks, of course, they're all cleaner now because they're all in the computer, so you don't have bits of paper, glue, scissors, scalpels hanging around the studio. You don't have boards 
you know, you have, everything is contained in the computer. Added to which, the computer is really useful for two big things in my mind. One of which is fonts. So the use of fonts becomes easier and quite easy to change, move around, adjust, and space. Whether you're being technical minded or just visually minded, whether it's the leading, kerning, or just the look on a page. It's all easier with a computer. The other big thing a computer does via Photoshop is allow you great license to comp and clean up. In the old days, you would be doing collage for real, so you'd be cutting out, as of that example, is cut out, lots of cut out pictures that are re stuck down on the original background and re photographed. And then the lines caused by the shadows of one piece of bromide on top of another are then erased on the single copy sheet. But it means you lose a generation and it's much more awkward. It doesn't stop it being a good piece, it just means that the piece that you make is harder to make. Of course, the modern technology has no effect on the imagination. The imagination remains the same. So the computer is not used to generate any ideas at all, or any designs really. The computer is used simply as a tool in the same way the scalpel is. As to the other question that I think you're referring to about the state of packaging, obviously it's possible that the internet will obviate the need for packaging. ICDs may disappear. Currently vinyl is showing a strange resurgence of interest and in many ways of course the vinyl was much more fun for me personally than the CD because the CD is quite small. The CD has a booklet often which is quite useful and you can invent and try and improve the packaging but it is on a fairly small canvas so on that, in that sense it's not hugely encouraging. However, I personally, due to a conceited ego the size of a small planet, do not really care. I'm only interested in, in an image. I'm not really interested in formats. I'm interested in trying to find somewhere. I don't care where it comes from, really. I'm, I'm completely amoral when it comes to art. I'm trying to find an image that seems suitable for the music. And usually that requires quite a lot of exploration in my own head and with the band because they don't know what it is either. So you're reaching for a cover design that will represent the music. What size it is, what place it is, is sort of irrelevant at first, mostly because it covers appear all over the place. So they can be the size of a postage stamp on iTunes, or they can be a billboard on Sunset Boulevard, or in Toronto High Street. You can't tell. It may appear as a t-shirt, or on the side of a pair of sneakers it may appear. You know, you don't know where it's going to appear. You see, you, as a designer, you dread where it's going to appear, because often it's bastardized. At least with these guitars, I'm in charge, so I feel better about that. But apropos the death of the CD and the possible imminent demise of the album cover, I will, of course, be very sad, having spent 40 years doing them. <laughs> but there's not much I can personally do to preserve them, nor in a way do I want to. You know, if it comes to be the way of the world or the march of progress, ha ha, that album covers decease, and so be it. But I'm not sure that that would be true of images and music. I think that might sustain, whether it's for a t-shirt, a live concert, an internet, or whatever it is. I think that the whole dynamic, or I think synthesis, is that the word? The side-by-side -side existence of images and music is probably immutable because sight and sound are different senses and always probably will be and therefore require a different thing. So you may have some great music but wish to represent it visually somewhere, somehow, even on a program, wherever it is. So I think that particular attribute or event will remain and therefore I'll still have a job, thank God as opposed to losing a job because of no more album covers. In a way, album covers are just simply one of the manifestations of music and image. And I've obviously had a lot of satisfaction, and still get it, in trying to devise images to represent music. I mean, i just done one, we just did one last week, two designs, one for an electronic band, which was great fun, 
and another one for a reissue of Beatles songs done in an experimental way, which was also quite interesting because it was kind of taking liberties of sorts or ex extend extending the interpretation as, as per jazz of how you treat a melody. Very interesting. So I think in many ways I'm very lucky because I get to sit around listening to music and trying to come up with images and then people pay me. Never enough, of course. Uh, so, do you... Have we finished? Not enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's great. Uh, it's great. Couples. You say that to all the girls, I know. <laughs> do you, when you're coming up with the concept or image, do you design, usually yeah. hear, listen to the music first, or...? Yeah. When we design, we all, we do, we incorporate four, or three, three or four things. Firstly, the music, always the music even if it's in demo form, and we play it endlessly here in the studio or in the car or at home. And we, the three of us design together. My colleagues are called Peter Curzon and Dan Abbott, who are completely annoying, but great designers. And so when we work together, we have, as it were, joint designs, singular designs, trio designs, duo designs. This provides for a fresh input. So what Peter may think of or Dan will be different from each other, will be different from what I think of. But then we also work together. This is very handy because it provides a more varied submission. The ideas are then submitted to the musician who likes or dislikes. So we listen to the music first and foremost, read the lyrics, if there are any. Talk to the band. This is probably very important and it depends how much the band will talk to us. I think it's, um, in, simple, in simple terms, it's trying to get into their head a bit. Obviously, I have a limited time to do that, but it's, very, it's actually very interesting. If you ask a musician what are his preoccupations, he actually stops and thinks, he or she, because, of course, the preoccupations are, as it were, the background, the soup, for which informs the music. So it may not be the reason for the music. The song may not be about his preoccupation, but the preoccupation probably undercurrents it somehow. So, and then the title. The title is rarely persuasive. Sometimes there isn't one, but just every now and then, like Technical Ecstasy for Black Sabbath, for 35 years ago, the title can be effective, but mostly it's not particularly. Sometimes the title, I wish you were here, comes afterwards. It comes after we've had some images, and to some extent comes from the images. But the music is central. It's an outmoded view, I know. I'm not interested in commerce, I'm not interested in selling albums, obviously, because I don't get a cut, but I wouldn't be interested anyway. I'm only interested in representing the music. And whether I have or I haven't is, is usually left to the musician to decide. And I give them a sort of choice of ideas, because I don't know which one is best. They usually give six or seven, and they're usually happy with that. In fact, sometimes, as often as not, actually, what happens is that um, they can, in fact, get confused because they don't know which to choose, and they get more worried about the ones they haven't chosen than the ones they have. But they come to a decision, and you can be sure that, by and large, whatever the album cover is, it's something that represents the band because they like it, otherwise they wouldn't have it. I do sometimes get asked what the relevance of an image is, and sometimes I don't know. Sometimes it's purely visceral, purely spontaneous. Sometimes it's actually carefully thought out, and in fact, in a detailed way, it's very, very appropriate. It's like a little journey. We take a little journey trying to find, as it were, <clears throat> the appropriate image, and if the viewer could then be persuaded to take the same journey, they'll have as much fun as we do. I hope. Um, are there other artists whose album works that you're a big fan of, or where do you, s what's your vision of where you see these guitars ending up, or have you thought about it, or? Not really, no, because I presume they're private. I mean, in fact, actually, I have, I have, um, I think, indicated my belief that these are not for sale. I, as far as I'm concerned, I've made them with the two Jeffs, and that's where they should stay. Whether they should be passed by them as a gift to somebody else is entirely their matter, but I trust that they will not be resold. I, 
think they should not. Anyway, only, there's only one of them. So I think it would be a pity if they were, because I don't think that's why we did them. So I think in that sense, I think it would be... What's the word I want? Ill-advised? Inopportune? So I'm presuming these... I'm hoping these guitars will end up either on public display or more particularly in somebody's gaff or house who will love it. I mean, at the moment, we love them, so we're very happy about them. They're quite difficult, but they're working at the moment very well, and um, I haven't, I've yet to complete one, <laughs> um, but nearly. We nearly completed three, so in that, as of today, which is, whatever it is, May the 20th. May the 19th. So in a way, in a sense, I think the guitars, I would like to think of them as, as objets d'art. You know, they're, they're bits of art, really much as they can be played, because the art does not interfere, I hope, with the um, functionality. So they could be played. They should be in the hands, I think, of a guitar lover and a fan of rock and roll, because the motifs that we're resuscitating, in a way, are also, I guess, part of rock and roll, really.